Welcome. This is Dr. Amanda Rockinson zapq In this session, we are going to begin discussing the literature review. In this session, we have two objectives. First, we're going to define the literature review, and second, we're going to identify the purpose of the literature review. To this point, I have said the word literature review several times. I want you to think about the first time I said it, or even think about it now. Literature review. What internal feeling do you have? Some of you may feel like the first girl in this picture. It's overwhelming, stressful, and you aren't quite sure what it is. However, some of you may look like the second girl in the picture, the dark-haired girl. She looks like she absolutely loves the library and is excited about doing the literature review. The reality is, is most of us feel like the first girl when we first approach a literature review. This is normal. However, I hope by the end of this session you feel more like the second girl. Now let's focus our attention on the first objective, defining the literature review. What is a literature review? When I ask that question, what is a literature review, do you have any ideas? Also, then the second objective we're going to talk about is what purpose does it serve in relation to your research? Why in the world do you even need a literature review? I think the definition that Ridley gave in 2008 of a literature review really identifies what the literature review is and also its purpose. I'm going to take some time and read you this definition. The literature review is where there is an extensive reference to related research and theory in your field. It is where connections are made between the source text you draw on and where you position yourself in and um, your research among other sources. It's the opportunity, think of this, it's an opportunity to engage in written dialogue with researchers in your area, while at the same time showing that you have engaged with, understood, and responded to the relevant body of knowledge underpinning your research. So your literature review is a demonstration of your knowledge of the literature base in your area of research. The literature review is where you identify theories and previous research which influenced your choice of research topic and the methodology that you are choosing. So the literature search you are doing should influence your research topic, your research question, the variables, and the methodology that you choose. You can use the literature to support your identification of a problem to the research and illustrate that there is a gap in previous research that needs to be filled. Remember in the session about identifying your topic, we talked about the importance of empirical research being related to theory. Um, the importance of contributing literature to the field, filling a gap in the literature. The literature review helps you identify what that gap is. And the literature review therefore serves as the driving force, the jumping off point for your own research investigation. So the literature review really grounds your research. When we talk about literature review, I want you to think about it in terms of a process the process of searching through the literature, reading the literature, and then a literature review is also the product. It's the written dialogue that you have with the other researchers in your area. It's the, the written product. Let's focus a little more on defining the product. When you write a literature review, these are some of the things that you need to include in it. Specifically, we're going to look at the introduction here. When you write the introduction to your literature review, it needs to have these four components. First of all, you need to overview the problem. So for example, let's say that I want to look at cyberbullying. I'm going to overview the statistics on how cyberbullying is increasing as more students um, connect mobily and more students connect online. I'm going, to cons I'm going to provide an indication of why the problem is worth considering. Why is cyberbullying cyber bullying worth considering? Well, if we go to the literature, we may see that cyberbullying is um, decreasing self-esteem, increasing violence, so this is why it's worth considering. Also in the introduction, you want to briefly identify and explain what contribution the study will make. So I'm going to say, for example, let's say I'm looking at an intervention for cyberbullying and there's a call in the research for effective interventions to decrease cyberbullying. So I'm going to say this is the gap and here's how I'm going to contribute. 
And in doing that, I'm going to cite at least one study, but probably more like two or three studies that are directly related to my proposed study that lead to the theoretical justification. Again, I'm going to ground it in the literature. So the introduction is an overview of the problem and an overview of your study and how it relates to the literature. Then, in the body of the literature, you're going to provide the context of your study by reviewing the literature. Now, as you review the literature, you need to be careful that you don't simply create a library of facts, a library of he said, she said, but you need to take the literature and construct an argument for why your research is important and why it needs to be considered based on what's in the field. So as you can read here, the literature review provides a context of the study and clarifies the relationship between the proposed research and your previ and previous research. You show how the proposed research study is unique. Again, identifying that gap. How are you contributing to the literature? You have to convince your reader. Now l listen to that word, convince. So that means that implies argument. Convince the reader your study is timely and it's worthwhile. Demonstrate your critical ability as a scholar. Critique what has been done. Again, I said be careful not to say Joan said this, Anderson said this, or he said, she said. You are formulating an argument from your perspective and you're using the research that's been done to support those that argument. And finally, make assertions. Again, convince your reader of the legitimacy, legitimacy of your study. Um, provide logical support and more importantly, provide that empirical support. So your, the body of your literature review is truly an argument for your research. This brings us back to our questions that we proposed at the beginning of this session. What is a literature review and what, it's, what is its purpose? Let's first consider what is not a literature review and what is not its purpose. Remember, a literature review isn't a compilation of facts and feelings. It's not a library. Remember, it's not a summary of studies. You shouldn't have he said this, she said this, he said this. You may start out by constructing your literature review by providing summaries of different research studies, but it shouldn't stay there. Finally, and we didn't discuss this, but it's worth mentioning, a literature review is not um, does not contain secondary sources. So you use primary sources. So you shouldn't say, well, Jones said Anderson said this. And also, it's not based on common knowledge. And what I mean by that is here um, is let's take a um, divorce for an example. Um, oftentimes, I will hear people say, do the divorce rate is increasing? That's common knowledge. However, that common knowledge is not accurate. Actually, if you look at the current research, the divorce rate is actually decreasing. Now that we've talked about what a literature review is not, let's talk about what is a literature review and what truly is its purpose. A literature review is a coherent argument that leads to your proposed study. It's written from your perspective. It, remember, it's not the summary of research, it's a synthesis. And synthesis, synthesis means higher order thinking and analysis. It's a synthesis of the literature arranged around themes and topics. So when it, you may start out, like I said, with Joan said this, Anderson said this, but you should start looking for those themes in the literature and develop argument points around those themes. Again, it's written from a critical perspective and it should contain primary, reliable, valid sources. Your literature review should contain primarily primary peer-reviewed sources. So that concludes this session. I hope this gives you a better understanding of what a literature review is and what its purpose is.